And one of the other uh, points here, to, and this I think will lead in well to the sort of solutions uh, conversation, but you talk a little bit about, uh, well, you brought it up at the beginning of this, this podcast, but there was, there was a, a spat of uh, postal shootings going postal. There's it's sort of um, weird to me that in uh, one of my uh, near where my mom lives in, in Pennsylvania, there's actually a store uh, like a mail store called going. Oh, really? Postal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like, but, but even that is kind of an interesting thing because, because it's sort of indic indicative of how we don't really see that anymore. That was kind of a trend in yes. the nineties, as you mentioned, and then it doesn't really happen today. Um, and so the same thing with uh, serial killers is another thing that you'd mentioned and sort of talk about this same sort of, contagion effect or um, <clears throat> uh, social proofing effect where serial killers were all the rage, right? In the eighties and nineties. And um, they're not anymore. Although I do, uh, you know, they, they have kind of become retro uh, now. Yes. I guess, we, we all love a good which serial is a little killer bit concerned podcast, to me. right? And, uh, and yeah, there's, there's movies and TV shows about that. That's very Yeah. True. Obviously the Dahmer Netflix yep. show was extremely and the Mind popular. Hunter, I watched uh, it. series as well. And yeah. Right. And so I, when I see that, I do think like, oh, gee, I wonder if that actually we had a serial killer near where I live um, recently. It didn't get it, but uh, it, noticeably, as you discuss in the book, it did not garner national media coverage in the way that the Dahmer or, um, or some of the other spectacular, you know, sensational uh, serial killer stories did uh, in the eighties and nineties. And, but, uh, but these two trends seem to suggest that this is not something that has to go on forever. And even when these, these sort of factors exist, like social proofing or contagion effect or the way media, uh, you know, sort of sensationalizes these events, um, <clears throat> they can still be prevented. Um, now you have obviously specific proposals as to um, uh, how that can be addressed. And so uh, you mentioned a couple of them here, but what, what would you say are the very, just your, your key points as to how society should look at this issue and, uh, try to prevent this this sort of collection of incentives to carry out a mass shooting moving forward. You mentioned this sort of like the cycles that we go through. So there was a massive fear of serial killers in the 80s and early 90s. Child mm -hmm. abductions was a big focus in the mid 90s. School shootings in and around Columbine were a big focus. Post 9-11, it was terrorism, which was a big focus and now it's mass shootings, which are, are sort of, if you look at that trajectory over time, and there's two ways of thinking about it, which is on the one hand, each of those events changed our relationship with society. You know, so people's response to serial killers and child abductors and other things was that we stopped playing outside. We stopped hitchhiking to San Francisco. Um, we changed our routine activities. The big byproduct of 9-11 was if you see something, say something. And we all kind of rallied around this idea that each and every one of us can prevent an act of terrorism because we're all in this together. And I think that's what's maybe unique about mass shootings is that mass shootings aren't unifying us, they're dividing us. But one of the things we try and focus on in our book is you can take lessons from the things that we've done over time to address other social problems, including coming together to embrace the complexity of this to actually come towards solutions. So we layer our solutions at three levels. We say there are things you can do at the individual level right here, right now, as a concerned citizen, as a parent to address this problem. And that might be something as simple as if you have a firearm in the home and a teenager in the home, safely securing that weapon could save lives. Hmm. We also talk about if you have a teenager in your life, mentoring that young person, giving them hope, making them seen, getting them connected to friends and family and community 
is also going to help prevent a mass shooting. Right, because uh, actually, a like, real quick point on that. There is a part in the book where you talk to uh, somebody who had planned to carry out a mass shooting and then was pre- didn't do it. And you'd go through why they didn't do it. And this was a key point, which is this, this sort of relationship that they had. There was somebody, um, a friend's mother had baked them a pie. And that was enough in that moment of crisis that they were going through. Uh, to sort of um, help off ramp them, as you guys talk about off ramping, right? Uh, to to get them away from that that uh, idea of of carrying out a uh, mass killing, and um, you know, it's very similar, I think, in a lot of ways to uh, how how you would prevent suicides, uh, which is another obviously important issue that um, that America struggles with. It has a relatively high rate of suicide for um, you know not. There's obviously other countries that have higher rates, but but it's still an, a significant issue here, and and uh, especially in the gun owning community as well. Um, we've had we've done podcasts with some of the efforts to to um, help alleviate the, the the problems. But but you know the, these solutions seem fairly simple, and that seems to be or fairly similar. Simple well, simple, is not the right and, word. no, similar. actually both. I, I and I appreciate well, you saying that because to some degree, providing somebody with a bit of hope, a simple act yeah. of kindness can get them through that moment of crisis. And that's why the learning Mm -hmm. from suicide prevention is applicable in these cases. Because as I said before, mass shooting is a final act. It's often a suicidal act. And so what can we apply from suicide prevention to prevent at that individual Mm -hmm. level? Um, we also talk about- Yeah, some of the the tactics are simple. Like the problem is complex, but some of the ways you can help prevent it are simple, like just being there for somebody um, uh, doesn't always work, uh, as you described in the book. No. But but um, but it's uh, but it's know, a, there there were there were shooters in here who had family members that were you know willing to drive up or fly out to try and help them in the moment of crisis. But it uh, you know it wasn't enough at that point. And there, there's it's not all it's not again there's no one single light switch that you flip. But this is this is the this key problem. thing though for for your listeners, right? Is whenever one of these things occurs, a mass shooting, we all feel hopeless. We feel like mm. nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to change, this is going to keep happening, right? The message here is one of hope, which is to say you have skin in the game with this, right? We don't have to wait for Congress to act. We don't have to wait for some sort of magic wand to be waved. Just by caring for your loved ones and watching out for the warning signs that someone's on that pathway to violence, you can be proactively part of the solution here as an individual, right? So if you feel hopeless in this and you're asking that question of like, what can I do? Just me as a parent, as a teacher, as a concerned American citizen, what can I do? That right there is it. You know, if you've got someone in your life, you know, is struggling, not necessarily that they're going to be the next mass shooter, but just somebody who's struggling, reach out to them, right. uh, take mm-hmm. care of them. And that's and that and that gives you a little bit of ownership. It's the same thing as if you see something, say something. We're all on the same page here. We're all part of the solution. We all have to have eyes open. That's a lot of eyes, right? That's 300 mm-hmm. million eyes looking after one another that can help prevent this problem. 